Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we explore convenient yet effective shortcuts that will help you get ahead and move forward faster by becoming a better leader. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert and certified emotional intelligent practitioner, Jim Rimbach. Need a powerful and entertaining way to ignite your next conference retreat or team building session? My keynotes don't include magic, but they do have the power to help your attendees take a leap forward by putting emotional intelligence into their employee engagement, customer engagement, and customer-centric leadership practices. So bring the infotainment creativity of the Fast Leader Show to your next event, and I'll help your attendees get over the hump now. Go to beyondmorale.com forward slash speaking to learn more. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, when my good friend Karen Hurt, who was on episode 64 of the Fast Leader Show, said that I needed to meet this person, she was right, and so I have him on the show. Michael Tao was born in the northern state of Malaysia known as Penang, a melting pot of cultures, ethnicities, even food delicacies, renowned for being one of the top tourist destinations in the world. He was raised in a typical middle-income family where Michael's parents ran an education school, which provided academic support to the poorest students in the state. At a tender age of four, Michael was brought up in a classroom-like setting where he recalls fondly of the moment when he picked up a chalk and started to sketch his stories for the amusement of teachers and students. Despite his humble beginnings, life did not spoil Michael as he had to struggle through his years in school where he was bullied because he was weak in sports and that he hailed from a middle-income family who couldn't afford much. However, Michael learned an invaluable lesson from his journey growing up, and that is that we should strive to create opportunities to help others rather than to wait for others to give opportunities to us. Michael Teo has surprised many of his naysayers who had once bullied him. He is the founder of Thriving Talents, an award-winning millennials-focused talent development company who attracts, develops, and retains young leaders for Fortune 500 companies across 39 countries. He has also been featured on CNN, BBC, and the Malaysian Book of Records while being recognized as a national youth icon by the Malaysian Prime Minister. Michael is also a serial investor with investments in properties, precious metals, commodities, and had recently endeavored into the food and beverage industry in Southeast Asia's booming consumer market. He's also a global advisor with Microsoft's Youth Spark Initiative, SAP's Millennials at Work campaign, and has been on the board for many organizations. He is also the co-author of The Potential Matrix, a book in which he has researched the world's most celebrated young leaders. Michael currently lives in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Michael, are you ready to help us get over the hump? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jim, for having me here. And hello to everyone tuning in right now. I'm very excited to be here. No, I've given our listeners a little bit about you, and I'm glad you're here too. But can you tell us what your current passion is so that we can get to know you even better? Well, my current passion is developing the human potential because I believe if we want to see any positive change that happen in our world today, even in our own lives, it actually starts with us needing to develop our skills, having the right attitude, and of course, having that guiding hand just to guide us through weather, through the stormy weathers and help us unleash our potential. I've seen how some of my students who have actually attended my talks, who have actually learned some of the strategies that took me years to learn, have transformed their lives over time. And the best thing I'm doing right now, Jim, is that I've incorporated into running it as a full-time business. And that's what I do in Thriving Talents. You know, I, I'm really intrigued because of, you know, reading and learning a little bit more about you and talking about your growing up, how you were bullied. And really, you had the opportunity to be someone who just melted away within society. How can you take the adversity that you went through and turn it into this whole potential thing that you're talking about now. I believe it all started with a self-realization, a realization that I've given all my best. I've tried to become the best athlete that I possibly could at school, but I just couldn't make the cut. And what happened was I thought, you know, we just live once. That's my personal belief. And I just thought, why not give the best that we can in life? And that was the time when I started seeking out mentors. And I was very glad that while I was in school, I had teachers who actually gave me my first opportunity. Now, oftentimes, I believe as a human being, we need that one turning point. And that one turning point is essential. And usually that comes in disguise as opportunities for us to make the best use of it. So as for me, I started participating in business plan competitions. I started participating in conventions and seminars. I became a volunteer. I started to raise up my hands to take up responsibilities in life and in school. And without, I, without knowing it, I started to realize that, hey, I have found a new niche in my life. 
I may not be good in sports at that time, but at least I could be good at something. And for me at that time, it was running a business. It was inspiring lives at a tender age when I was just 16 to 17 years old. And that was my turning point. And I think the biggest most fatal pitfall for any human being to make sense or to find purpose in his life is to just give up and like you mentioned jim melt away with the flow i believe all of us are put into this world for a destiny for a purpose and i think we could actually find it and once we found it we just need to make that opportunity the best that we can okay so i have to know michael because it's just kind of it's, it's kind of you know one of those things that as a parent you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And I, and I, you know, look at others and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Or I should do that. When you started talking about those moments, uh, and when, you know, you came home and you're, and you probably, you know, wept to, to your parents and talked about, you know, how mean they were at you. How, what did your, what did your parents do in order to redirect you or in order to have you to have the outlook that you have now and being able to accomplish the things that you've accomplished? You know, I'll be honest with you, Jim, and for all of you who are coming from the parts of uh, Asia, you would know that Asian parents would normally want their kids to excel very well in academic studies. At least that was during my time when we just turned uh, to the new millennium. It was the early 2000s. But one thing I really appreciated that my parents did was that they supported me in my pursuit of enhancing what we today know as soft skills. They knew that I was not so academically inclined because I was studying something which I didn't like that was science subjects. I didn't like science subjects during that time. But one thing though, when I have put in the effort to actually explore other side about me, oratory skills, public speaking, acting in drama, debating, business plan writing. One thing that I really appreciated that my parents and my grandparents as well did was that they supported me. And I'm not asking parents out there to actually give all their wealth to their kids to experiment on an idea. What I am asking is that for parents out there to give that moral support, because you cannot imagine how just a simple remark from your dad or from your mom encouraging you to pursue your dreams or to find that purpose in life could actually lead that ordinary person to become an extraordinary person in the future. And I think as for me personally, as the son, as the daughter, or as the kid at that time, I believe there should be more conversations that should be held between ourselves and our parents to make them at least try to make them understand, I would say, about our perspective of the world of what we may not be so good at right now and what can we excel in and just have a win-win situation. One of the things that I basically did with my parents was to actually form a wager in a sense where I was not so academically inclined because I was studying science. But I have proven to them that whenever I join competitions, whenever I commit myself to get involved in businesses, I do it at 100%. And I think if you really want success, if you really want purpose in your life, just commit, convince the other parties, your stakeholders that you are there to give your 100% commitment and just do it to the best of your abilities and show them results. You know, there's a study that I was reading uh, in regards to the difference between Asian parents, because you brought that up, you know, and just say, just say, you know, American parents, because, uh, you know, I'm here in the States. And so when you started looking at some of the things that were associated with how your parents supported you, one of the things that they uh, were talking about in the study was that American parents would do too much coddling. They would actually... <laughs> You know, when you talk about support, they would give support and say that they did well, even if they didn't do well, um, right. where Asian parents kind of cut to the chase and said, hey, you did bad in that. And you did bad in that because you didn't focus on and do these things. And so therefore, if you want to perform better at it, you need to be you know, more diligent and, ha and show more effort to be able to have the performance. And they talk about the difference between the coddling and the tough love. Did your parents coddle you or did they give you tough love? 
Well, I would say it's a mix of both, actually. I would imagine that uh, my mom cuddles me while my dad gave me tough love. But I would imagine that uh, it's actually very important to have the best of both worlds. Now, one of the things that really changed my life was that I was 16 years old and I was trying to find a purpose in my life. And I remember my dad permitting me to actually go for a real estate conference. Now, at at the age of 16, I was there all alone by myself. And I was attending a conference about real estate. I mean, what do I know about real estate? But one of the things that I did realize is that it opened my mind. And it also, I would say, broadened my horizons to actually see what are the opportunities out there and how all these rich and successful people actually managed to accomplish their dreams and how did they get to where they are today. So I think as much as you ask the question, Jim, about whether it's cuddling or tough love, I think parents would also require some assistance from the outside, which is why it's very important. One thing I would suggest to parents is get yourself involved with associations. I understand that there are some organizations or NGOs out there like the Rotary Clubs or the Lion Clubs or Leo Clubs, which parents could actually bring their kids to expose them to some early childhood dose of market reality. And then the parents coming in to become a coach for the kids. I believe the time has passed when the last time we could see parents are often seen as dictators. They would often dictate what the kids should do, what the child should do, at least from an Asian perspective. But I think right now the parents should be a coach. In a sense, do not dictate, but at the same time, have a chat with the kid, with the child, and help them to find their purpose in life. Well, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because we're finding this same thing really in the workplace. I mean, this whole coddling, tough love, you know, this parenting, coaching, it's what has to happen in the workplace these days. It is no longer a situation where you can just say, here's your job, here's the expectations, go to it, and I'm going to put you through this evaluation process you know, in order to develop you or terminate you. That, that just doesn't work anymore. Right, right. Well, it's so interesting that you mentioned that because this is one of the things I want to share right now. So leaving my childhood days, now let's talk about business. Let's talk about leadership. And I manage a team of 12 full-time talents at the moment, very passionate talent, and I am the dinosaur in the company at the age of 29. I mean, the rest of my directors, my middle management, my executives, they're all in their mid-20s to early 20s. And managing the millennials group, as they say it, it can be quite an interesting challenge at the same time. I mean, when do you push them? When do you actually bring them back and cuddle them, as you would say? And I just recently found out was that there are actually two types of environment that you need to create in your office space. Number one, all the millennials in the world, because they are influenced by Facebook, by Google, by Apple, they were influenced by their work culture. So in their mind, they're thinking it's all about fun, fun, fun. It's all about colors. It's all about having the perks at work. Now, being a startup or running a company like myself, we need to adapt. We know that the millennials are not influenced by the cultures of these companies, so we need to follow suit. So one of the things that I do is I do appear to become a coach to my other employees, where I do actually ask them questions. Like my favorite question is, Jim, how can I help you? How can I make your job easier for your current task? What can I do to help you with it? When you ask these golden questions, your staff, your employees will open up. And in their mind, you would appear more as a coach than a boss. Now, that is the first environment you want to create. You want to create that cuddling, loving environment so that you could stimulate their motivation. However, there are also some scenarios because we are running a business where the bottom line is important, ensuring that we deliver high quality of services to our client is of utmost importance. We also have a second environment that we have created. We call it the key performance indicator hour. Now, during that hour, our staff or employees, when they come into our office, they know that if they have not been performing, we are going to question them. We are going to share with them what has gone wrong, what can we do, what are some of the policies that we may need to amend and change. So what happens is that when you've created both of those environments, your employees will know that there is a time for them to have fun. There is a time where they know you're going to be there as their coach to coach them to maximize their potential. But there is also a time 
for seriousness. There's also a time when you're there to talk about the bottom line with them. So I believe this is a very synergistic relationship that we have built in the office, and it has definitely helped us to retain and motivate our staff forward. And I need to share this with you, Jim. Thriving Talents, we are angel invested. So we have two angel investors who back us up. We work with Fortune 500 companies. You know, a lot of people tend to say, wow, you're so great. But to be honest, our stress level is always at an all-time high. You work with Fortune 500 clients, they expect the best from you, they benchmark you across all the global best practices. You have investors who are always chasing you for the bottom line performance. So we need to be upfront with our employees, with our staff, just like how I am doing with my team. So that would be my take for you. Well, thanks for sharing that. I mean, I think that the whole dynamic piece is something that is going to be difficult for organizations if they've already been operating in a certain, you know, certain way in a certain manner is to bring that dynamic right. in to really prepare themselves for, you know, the next generation of workers. That's going to be the largest, you know, group of workers that we've ever had throughout human history. So I also hey. know that, I mean, you're high energy, you know, you talked about all this research that you were doing. I know you're, you have so much inspiration and in places that you Thank seek you. inspiration, but is it, and we'd like quotes on the show to help us with that. Is there a quote or two that you like that you can share? There are two quotes that have guided me throughout my life. And one of the quotes, you have actually mentioned it just now, but I'm going to repeat it again because it really resonates with me. That is, never wait for opportunities to come. Instead, create your own opportunities. And I also believe once you're able to create your own opportunities, have the heart to create opportunities for other people as well. Help them out because that will make your life much more meaningful and much more purposeful as well. Now, the second quote that I like to share is live with the kings, walk with the kings, but never lose that common touch. I'm always a believer where as a human being, all of us are blessed with the ability to speak. We are blessed with our appearances right now. We need to make the best use of it to make a positive impact to the world, but never ever forget how and why and where we started. Because I believe for every great leader in the world, they would always remember and reflect on the lessons they have learned throughout their journey since the day they started. Well, there's definitely a lot of journeys that we have to go through and there's a lot of humps uh, along the way. Uh, is there a time where you've had to get over the hump where it's made a difference for you? Definitely. And I must say this has just happened just last week. Well, my staff came up to me and just said, Michael, we are overworked. You're taking too many projects. We have too many high profile clients. We can't take it anymore. And I mean, I, I can share with you all the previous times I've gone through, but this has just occurred to me just last week and I couldn't believe it. And I thought I was this energetic entrepreneur. I was this energetic speaker speaking to thousands of people around the world, working with the biggest companies ever. And here I am thinking that I could motivate my staff and that my staff, they are motivated. My employees are great, but they find that they're not overworked. So one of the things that I realized is that being the entrepreneur, we need to pace ourselves as much as we can inspire, as much as we can motivate people. I think it is also very important for us to actually reflect on how are our employees, how are our staff, how are our core team working with us, catching up with us. And I was reminded over lunch with a billionaire entrepreneur in Malaysia whom I just met, and he just created a great company. It's one of our biggest low-cost airline. And he shared this with me. He said, Michael, a lot of businesses say we put customers first. And he said, that's wrong. In fact, you should put employees first. Because once you put your employees as your number one priority, and if they're well taken care of, the customers, they will take good care of them. So I thought that that was a very powerful lesson that I want to share with you. And I think, how did I overcome that hump of actually motivating my overworked employees or staff? I have conversation with them. I let them off on certain days and I bring them for retreats. But most importantly, I believe, Constant conversation is very important. Have weekly meetings with your staff and just be genuine and honest with them in a sense where just ask them in all honesty, how can I help you? How are you feeling in your job? What are some of the things that we could do together? That's what I would recommend. 
I think that's a, a good point. I, I think for even for me, I find myself that I need to say no more often to certain things okay. so that I can focus on, you know, the, the really the items and the elements and the people uh, that will allow me to go forward even faster. I know you have a lot of things going on. I mean, you know, talking about all of your clients, of course, and all that work. But if you were to look at all of the things that you have in front of you, what is one of your main goals? One of my main goals would be to inspire and to develop as many lives as I can. But the lives that I would want to develop are not limited to people who are just attending my workshops or seminars or reading my book and getting inspired and changing their lives. I would actually want to start developing people who could then speak who could then use their own stories to inspire because I believe in scaling. I believe in replication. I believe in sustainability. And I think as much as your own voice could move the world, I believe if you have a hundred, a thousand, a million other voices who are united with that same common goal. And we're not talking about a sophisticated goal here, Jim. We're talking about the goal of just sharing an advice, sharing an idea with a person next to you about how they could better themselves. I believe not only we can change the world, we can change the entire universe. We could change the way how people see their lives. We could change the way how people perceive their reality. So that would be my main goal. I don't know how I'm going to achieve it yet, but at least now I know I'm achieving it through one life, training up one person at a time. And the Fast Leader Legion wishes you the very best. Now, before we move on, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. An even better place to work is an easy to use solution that gives you a continuous diagnostic on employee engagement along with integrated activities that will improve employee engagement and leadership skills in everyone. Using this award-winning solution is guaranteed to create motivated, productive, and loyal employees who have great work relationships with their colleagues and your customers. To learn more about an even better place to work, visit beyondmorale.com forward slash better. All right, here we go, Fast Leader Legion. It's time for the Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Michael, the Hump Day Hoedown is the part of our show where you give us good insights fast. So I'm going to ask you several questions, and your job is to give us robust yet rapid responses that are going to help us move onward and upward faster. Michael Teo, are you ready to hoedown? Oh, wish me luck. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so what do you think is holding you back from being an even better leader today? I believe what's holding me back is sometimes self-doubt. Self-doubt in the sense, either am I really leading my team to the best of their capabilities? Am I actually maximizing the potential of my business, striving talents to impact more lives? And am I taking more risk? What is the best leadership advice you have ever received? Always think about the people first. The results will follow. What do you feel is one of your best tools that helps you lead in business or life? My persistence to deliver excellence and my persistence to reach out to as many companies, as many organizations, inspiring as many lives as possible. What would be one book, and it could be from any genre, that you'd recommend to our listeners? Anthony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, you can find links to that and other bonus information from today's show by going to fastleader.net forward slash Michael Teo. Okay, Michael, this is my last hump day head on question. Imagine you were given the opportunity to go back to the age of 21. Because you ain't but 29. Usually I say 25. We're going to go back to 21 for you. And you've been given the opportunity to take the knowledge and skills that you have now back with you. But you can't take everything back. You can only choose one. So what skill or piece of knowledge would you take back with you and why? My absolute focus to just focus on developing a business that I am excited to wake up every morning to do. And that is the training, speaking, and talent development business. Growing, thriving talents. Michael, it was an honor to spend time with you today. Can you please share with Fast Leader listeners how they can connect with you? Great, guys. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you for all of you again for listening to my views. Do get in touch with me at www.potentialmatrix.com. That's the website for my book. And I would really encourage all of you, have a look about it. You could reach out to me there. And I look forward to connect with you on Facebook. Just look me up on Facebook. Look me on LinkedIn. Just introduce yourself first. And I'll be more than happy to see how I could add value to your life. Thank you again, Jim, for having me. Michael Teo, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. Woo -woo! Thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net. 
so we can help you move onward and upward faster.